going to die tomorrow. How do you know you have years left in your life to make it until you're 60 years old and you're going to believe in Jesus? How do you know that? You don't. Today is the day of salvation, folks. Today. Today you can get right with God by the blood of Jesus. Today. Forget about this. Oh, I'm just going to sin or repent, sin or repent, sin or repent. Hey, shut God up. God understands. Hey, hey, get saved. How about that, young man? You need to get saved. You need to come to Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus, young man. you got your whole life ahead of you. You think you're just going to be invincible. You're not, sir. so many groups. You're not invincible. You're going to die one day. You really are going to die. I think everybody's going to go with that. We're all going to die one day. Where is your soul going to go? Not where you think it's going to go. Where is it really going to go? And how confident are you in that profession that your soul is going to go somewhere good? Let's go tired, baby! Go dogs! Go dogs! Go dogs!
Carry it. Carry it. Watch me. You just ran right in the back of that car. Backing up. Can you hear it backing up? Don't run in back there when it's backing up. The Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Many of you live for this day, for the SEC championship, to see your team win the SEC championship, and then maybe get a place in the college playoffs. You live for that day. That day is going to come and go, and it's not going to matter two years from now. But the day that, call, that God calls Judgment Day will matter. It's going to matter what happens on that day, on the day we call Judgment Day. The Bible calls Judgment Day. On that day, you won't be judged by how good of a fan you were, how many games you watched, how many beers you can guzzle, how nice you look, how many jerseys you buy, what memorabilia you have heaped up for yourself. On Judgment Day, God's going to judge you in righteousness. And the question you must ask yourself is, are you righteous? Do you think LSU with the points? What does Jesus think? I think Jesus is against football idolatry. That's what Jesus is against. You're exalting of men. You worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And you take your money, you've spent lots of time and effort to make, and you bet it on football games against the spread. Shame on you. Shame on you. Just bet it. Dogs by three. No, no, I don't think so. No. Jesus Christ is going to return. It's not go dogs, it's not go tigers, it's go Jesus. And I've lived in Louisiana, and I've lived in Georgia, and they're both full of hypocrites. Right, both in a Bible belt that holds up the, hand, the pants of hypocrisy. As my brother said earlier, it's time to take the belt off and get a spanking. So we're here today to tell you the truth, to give you some tough love, that you might know the truth. You might not end up in hell for your sins. What a tragic thing it would be if your tigers, your beloved tigers or beloved bulldogs won today, but then you died today and end up in hell. What rejoicing would there be in hell over your team winning today if you end up in hell? What rejoicing would it be for the LSU Tigers or the Georgia Bulldogs if you end up in hell today? There'd be no rejoicing. That's, that's basically exactly what Jesus said. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the end? And for a lot of you, this is your world. Your world is LSU football. Your world is Georgia Bulldogs football. You wear the jackets, you wear the hats, you wear the jerseys, you paint it on your face. You, you live to say, go Tigers, you even spell it G-E-A-U-X. You think that's kind of cool and Cajun looking. But the fact of the matter is, you still need Jesus. The fact of the matter is, you're still a sports idolater. You're still idolizing men. I mean, do you go, those of you who claim to be Christians who are here today, do you go this far for Jesus? You look at me as some kind of fanatic because I have a sign that has Bible concepts on it and I'm preaching on a loudspeaker. But you'll drive hundreds of miles from Louisiana or from Athens or from somewhere else in Georgia to watch a dumb game. To watch men in tights try to cross a white line with an inflated pigskin. Think about how ridiculous that is in light of eternity. Think about how ridiculous it is in light of eternity. You're going to sit here and watch again. Hey, take your hands off my son, sir. 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 Don't. Well, I just wanted to know what part of judge or not you don't understand. Oh, you, where's that in the Bible, sir? Show me in the Bible. Show me just not in the Bible. Oh. It's not there. Not there. You, you, should be, you should be winning people over, not running. By going to LSU games. By traveling hundreds of miles to go to LSU games, right? That's how I win them over? By going hundreds of miles? You think I came to hear you? You came to the Tigers game. That's how you win fans, right? That's how you win people to Jesus, right? You win people to Jesus by coming to an LSU football game. 
That's how you win people to Jesus, right? You're going to instruct me about how to win people to Jesus while you have an LSU hoodie on? You're going to instruct me about Bible verses when you can't even quote one properly? Is that really the way it works, sir? Don't tell me how to win people to Jesus when you're here and you can travel hundreds of miles to come to a college football game. What's that? What about Kansas? He's gone. Who, who's that? Miles is gone. What's your point? You keep saying miles, but he's dead. Hundreds of miles, not less miles. Nice try. I mean, that's that's got you got you got to have a few beers in to make to laugh at that. You got to have a few too many beers in to laugh at something like that. That was that wasn't that good of a joke. That's what we call a dad joke in my circle. Hey, no matter who your coach is today, Center, it's not going to matter on Judgment Day. Jesus! Jesus! Go Jesus, I'm watching. Yeah, not go Tigers, not go Bulldogs, go Jesus. Not go drunkenness, not go sports idolatry, go Jesus. Not go immodestly dressed women, go Jesus. Go Tigers. Go Jesus. Go Tigers. Jesus with LSU, you know that? No, he's not. Try again. Now, Jesus Christ lived in Jerusalem, sir. I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm sure you can. It's amazing to me how people will come and they'll instruct you. I'm trying to instruct you about the scriptures. I wonder how many of you go to church tomorrow. I wonder how many of you will go to church tomorrow. And delude yourself into thinking you're okay with God while you're living in sin. I wonder how many here think they're right with God while they're drinking beer and guzzling it down. I wonder how many here think they're right with God while they're dressed in skin-tight clothing showing up every curve of their body. This is not the way a Christian lives. This is not the way a Christian lives. A Christian lives holy. A Christian is set apart from the world. A Christian isn't just like the world and wears a cross around their neck. A Christian isn't just like the world, but puts a Jesus fist in the back of their car. That is not a Christian. A Christian is someone who's been changed, transformed. Their desires have been changed. Their desires have been changed. You know, when I became a Christian 22 and a half years ago, my desires changed overnight. I used to be a sports fanatic. I got rid of that stuff. I stopped my sports fanaticism. I realized these were just men who are being exalted by other men for being good at a game. For being good at a game. It's got nothing to do with Democrats or Republicans. There'll be just as many Republicans in hell, sir, as Democrats. Just as many conservative Republicans in hell as there'll be Democrats. That's right. Yeah, we might be better off, maybe. Might be better off with Trump as president than Hillary, but I'll tell you this, he's still a sinner on his way to hell if he doesn't repent and follow Jesus Christ. And don't delude, don't, don't comfort, don't give yourself false comfort in your political stances. You know, recently, Chick-fil-A made some, what I would consider, dumb decisions. But you people, you, some, a lot of you, you put your trust in Chick-fil-A. You don't put your trust in GS. You don't stand up for the homosexuality and the, and the garbage in this world. You don't stand against it yourself. You expect some chicken maker, some chicken sandwich maker to stand up for, against homosexuality for you. But you don't even do it yourself. That's called hypocrisy. And so many people, they, they, they align themselves with groups, but they individually know nothing about Jesus Christ. They individually know nothing about Jesus Christ. You know how I know that? Well, Jesus himself, or the Bible says, now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He who says I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Now go Jesus, put your, put your beer down and, and follow Jesus. Dump your beer out and follow Jesus. Forget about the tigers, forget about purple and gold, forget about the bulldogs, forget about red and black. By the way, the Bible says the dogs will be outside the city. Uh-oh. That's true. Dogs will be outside the city. Don't be cheering for the dogs. Who let the dogs out? Not Jesus. They're not going to be in the kingdom according to Revelation 22. But in the scriptures, dogs are those who are spiritually unclean. And if you're a sports idolater, you're idolizing 
University of Georgia Bulldogs, and you are unclean before God because you're an idolater. I mean, think about it. What other thing will you travel hundreds of miles for, spend hundreds of dollars on, including all the memorabilia? What other thing will you do that for? Will you do it for God? Will you do it for Jesus? When was the last time you went on a mission trip for Jesus, for God? Thank you. Can you ever say you've ever done that? You can shake your head and your red bull does all you want, sir, and walk away. But these are the facts. These are the facts. And you need to deal with it. You need to see yourself in truth. Most of you probably never heard a message like this because you, you sit in your Baptist churches on Sunday mornings and they just preach you cream puff pie messages to make you feel better about yourself. They cuddle you in your sin. What's that, sir? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about going to hell. No, no, buddy. No, 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 no. What gives me a bad feeling about all this? I used to be a street preacher. I witnessed to a ton of people on the streets. And you know what? I never got anybody's face and started telling them they were bad. I learned them. I taught them what Jesus said about love and how to ask him into your heart, how to have forgiveness of sins. That's a whole lot better message you're going to hear from you. Yeah, you're running people off. Oh, so I'm telling you the truth. The Bible says that I'm running people off? Well, I'll tell you this, sir. You preached a false message, a half message, a half truth. Because the Bible talks about these things. And you're ashamed of the Word of God. You fear man. I'm not here to get anyone to ask Jesus into their heart. Because that won't save one person. It won't save one person. And you can high-five your way all the way to hell if you want to. But I'm here to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the truth is, Jesus talked about hell more than anything else. So if you don't want to talk about hell, you're a lot less like Jesus than I am. But Jesus talked about hell all the time. It's an important concept. It's important to talk about because the fact is, most people are going there. That's what the scripture says. Jesus himself said, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So the man walks by a minute ago and says, I used to be a street preacher. My question is, why did you used to be one? Why aren't you one anymore? Has the gospel become irrelevant? Does the gospel not matter anymore? Do souls not matter anymore? I plan on being a street preacher the day I die. It's up to me, I'll die street preaching. That's what God's will is. But he told me, he said, I would never confront people or make them feel bad about themselves. Well, I'll tell you what. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, sent to the world to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. What does that mean? It means the Holy Spirit makes people feel bad in their sin. The conscience that God has given to you, the law of God written upon your heart, the conscience also bearing witness, it talks about this in Romans 2, that it accuses you when you do wrong. So tell me you don't want to make people feel bad in their sin when the God-given conscience that God's given you makes people feel bad in their sin. When the Holy Spirit convicts the world and makes them feel bad about their sin, tell me you're doing God's will if you're not willing to make sinners feel bad about their sin. The fact is, if you are a sinner and you don't feel bad about your sin, there's something drastically wrong. Something drastically wrong. If you are a sinner and you don't feel bad about your sin, there's something wrong. Maybe you've corrupted your conscience, defiled your conscience. Maybe it's not working properly anymore. Maybe you've deceived yourself thinking you're okay with God when you're really not. But the fact of the matter is this. If you are in sin of any kind, unrepentant sin in your life, maybe you're a drunkard, maybe you're a homosexual, maybe you're a liar, maybe you're a sports idolater, whatever your sin may be, if you are in sin right now and you don't feel bad about it, there's something wrong. There should be a warning going on within you from your conscience. There should be a warning coming from the outside by reading the scriptures and hearing the word of God preached. There should be a warning within you to tell you you're on the wrong path, you're going the wrong way, that what you're doing you're not made for, you weren't made to do those things. So if you're in sin and you don't feel bad about it, you're laughing about it and joking about it, something drastically wrong. You may have gone to the point of no return for all I know. But we're here today to awaken your conscience again. 
to bring the conviction of the Holy Spirit via the preaching of the Word of God, that you might hear the Word of God and be saved. God isn't real, jackass. Yes, He is. Keep telling yourself that, Prove sinner. It. Keep telling yourself that, sinner. Keep telling yourself that. You, when you stand before Him on Judgment Day, you're not going to tell me he's fake then. Nope. You might as well go out on I-85 and say, that 18-year-old doesn't exist. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Oh, it just flattened you out, didn't it? Well, someday God's judgment is going to come like that. God's judgment someday will come and flatten you out. So I'm here to warn you before that happens that you might repent, that you might get right with God, that you might have eternal life. No, sinner, Jesus isn't your homeboy. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords, the name above every name, the name by which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. There's no other name under heaven given among men which we must be saved beside Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing? You reveal with your mouth what you really love and treasure, don't you? Don't you? That's what Jesus said. Out of the mouth comes the overflow of the heart, the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. You'll say, go tigers and go dogs, but you won't say go Jesus like that. You'll put, you'll put a little microscopic Jesus fish in the back of your car to show how big your faith is. Because, you know, you got a mustard seed, right? That's where God wants you to stay. When it comes to cheering for football, go tigers, go dogs, because that's popular, that's accepted, that's, that's you know, that's no big deal. But you say, go Jesus, oh, now it's intolerant. Now it's politically incorrect. Now you might lose some friends. Now you might get some hatred come your way. And isn't that exactly what Jesus said? If they, they call me Beelzebub, Jesus said, and I am your teacher and you are my disciple, if I am your master, you are my servant, what will they say about you? And so many of you, you don't want people to say bad things about you. You don't want to be seen as intolerant or politically incorrect. That's like the worst sins in the world today. God bless the USA. Uh, no. No, God will only bless that which is righteous. God will only bless that which is righteous. And the USA is far from righteous, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. Far from righteous. I mean, look at this. Look how many people are here today to watch this football game. I wonder if, if maybe just one thirtieth, one hundredth of this many people came to an abortion clinic, it'd be shut down in a day. If, if one hundredth of this many people, just 75 people, came to an abortion clinic, it'd be shut down in a day. But 75,000 of you or more, I don't know the capacity of Mercedes Benz, but 75,000 75, or more of you come to this game today to watch men in tights run around with an inflated pigskin trying to cross a white line or kick it between two yellow poles. That is so foolish, so childish in light of eternity. Grow up. Live your life for Jesus Christ. What's up, my friend? Jesus Christ can be your friend today. But if you're a sinner, you're his enemy. Jesus said, you're my friend if you do whatever I command you to do. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Yeah, so if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. If you won't do whatever Jesus commands you to do, you cannot be his friend. If you, do, if you love the world, you don't have the love of the Father in you. What if Jesus Christ was telling you right now, to tear your tickets up, put them in the circular file, that garbage bin up there, and go home and get right with God. Would you do it? Oh, no, no, I paid hundreds of dollars for these tickets. Well, you reveal, get off, get off. you reveal the idolatry of your heart, sinner. You reveal the idolatry of your heart that you won't even tear up a sports ticket and put it in the garbage and follow Jesus Christ. You know, if Jesus Christ was here today, he wouldn't be in that stadium cheering on the Bulldogs or the Tigers. He'd be out here preaching the gospel to all the idolaters, calling them to repentance. No? Well, God loves the people who love the Tigers. He proved it by dying on the cross for them. But he's not a fan of the Tigers. You know, fan is short for fanatic. And the only person who deserves your fanaticism is Jesus Christ. How about go Jesus? Go Jesus. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. Yeah, see, you won't say that as loud, will you, sinner? You won't say that as loud, will you? You show the treasure of your heart. You show where the affections of your heart lie when you say, go tiger with all your heart, all your strength. But go Jesus, you come like a little mouse. Become like a little mouse. I wonder where I wonder where all these Christians are on 
on throughout the week. They go to church on Sunday. But where, where are they when it's time to go knock on doors? Where are they when it's time for a little bit of street evangelism? They disappear and make all the excuses in the world. But it comes to going to a Tigers Bulldogs SEC championship game, we'll rearrange schedules, we'll take the credit card out and slap it all on the credit card and worry about paying it off later. We'll do whatever we can to go to the to go to the game. Yeah, so you see who, who really are Christians, who really are, by what they do with their life, what they do with their money, what they do with their time. I mean, how much time did it take you to travel from Louisiana or from Athens area all the way here to watch a football game? You could have sat at home and watched it on cable TV that you're spending $200 a month on. You could have done that, but instead you come here and spend hundreds of more dollars. I mean, the parking here quadruples when these events happen here. I notice I come here during the regular weekend as $10, and now it's $40. And over here, it's $70? So they're just fleecing you for your money. Oh, yeah, George, University of Georgia, they love you. Louisiana State University, they love you. They, you know, they love you. No, they want your money. They want your money. So does NCAA football. They want your money. You're, fall, you're falling for it. You're falling for it. But Jesus said, do not lay out for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. See? Thieves are stealing your money. You don't even know it. They're stealing, you're fleecing you for your money. NCAA football, who won't even play that, he won't even pay the athletes who are putting their lives on the line fruitlessly, causing brain damage to themselves through hit, hitting hemlets together over and over and over again. There's documentaries about that. I make it very clear. They'll do these things. They, they won't pay them for it, but they'll take your money gladly and put it in their pockets. Why do you think that when I go to these big colleges, they have huge million dollar buildings? You're financing it. You're financing it. But he just said, watch out. Don't store up your treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in this deal. How much was that beer today? $10 for a beer? Where's that money go? $5 for a beer? How much are you spending for a beer today? How much does it cost at the grocery store? You're being fleeced look, for your money. Look behind you. You're being fleeced for your money. And you're destroying your brain cells, you're destroying your kidneys, your liver. For what? For a little bit of high? For a little bit of feel good? Well, Jesus is calling you to repentance. He's calling you to have, he's, he's offering you mercy. He's calling you to repent of your sins, turn to Jesus Christ in faith, that you might have hope that you might not end up in hell. It's the truth, sir. Where'd you come from, sir? Baton Rouge? We're gonna go, we're, Where'd you come from, sir? We're going to go to hell because we went to school? When did I say that? You did say that. Didn't say that. Didn't say that. No, I never, those words never came out of my mouth, sir. You're, you're too intoxicated. That's why you're not hearing right. So you're helping. Oh, 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 oh and, and we're too intoxicated. Yes, you're too intoxicated. Even you should go with your girlfriend. You're too intoxicated. You're drunk. Who can help me understand? You don't even understand. You can't help me understand anything right now, sir. You guys are being absolutely... Shame on you. Shame on you. Look at your filthy language. And you're going to apologize to children. Apologize for your filthy language. Jesus Christ. The Bible also says fornicators will not inherit God's kingdom. Hell ain't real. Well, keep telling yourself that, sinner. You'll we'll see someday. I, ho I hope you don't go there, sir. I hope you come to the realization of the truth that you realize it is real someday and you repent before you go there. Yeah, hell is real. Jesus Christ talked about you calling Jesus Christ a liar. The Bible says that when Christ returned with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. That's what happens when Jesus returns. You know, for all you know, I mean, it's not going to happen, but he, you know, what if Jesus Christ came back in the middle of this game and you're cussing out the referees for a bad call and you're mad at your team for making a, for fumbling the ball or getting sacked or throwing an interception? What happens when Jesus Christ returns when you're cussing? When filth is coming out of your mouth, curse words are coming out of your mouth, revealing the state of your heart. You're going to be ashamed that it's coming. Thank you, baby. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. But instead of being ashamed of Christ coming, if you're watching, if you're waiting, if you're praying, if you're living holy, you have no reason to be concerned. Oh, no, 
I don't, I don't want to hug. No, no thank you. Dog I'll pass. Seven. I have a wife to hug. I have children to hug. I don't hug strangers, sorry. Jesus Christ. I'm a homosexual. No, you're not. You're a liar. You're a liar. I don't believe you. You have none of the characters of a homosexual. But if you are, you're still on your way to hell. Liars and homosexuals go to the same place. Don't be a liar and don't be a homosexual. They all go to the same place on Judgment Day. Jesus Christ wants to save you from your sins. The Bible teaches in Romans 5, for when we were still without strength, see, sinners have no strength to save themselves, but we're still without strength in due time, at just the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, Christ died for you to save you from your sin, to save you from hell, to save you from judgment, to save you from sports idolatry, to save you from immodestly dressed clothing, to save you from filthy mouths, to save you from lying and stealing. Jesus Christ saved you to deliver you from your sin. What? What? Jesus Christ is not a tiger fan. Jesus Christ is a lion of the tribe of Judah. So let's get it right. Lion of the tribe of Judah. He was not a Tigers fan. He was not from Louisiana. He didn't eat jambalaya. Didn't eat crawfish. Didn't go to crawfish boils. In fact, crawfish is on the no list when it comes to what Jewish people eat. They don't eat crawfish. They don't eat bacon. They don't eat pork. And when I lived in Louisiana for four years, those are the three main courses of meat in Louisiana. Bacon, crawfish, and pig. Just pig in general. Jesus loves a dog. Those were the number one dishes in Louisiana. But I'll tell you right now, Jesus didn't eat those kind of things. He did. It's against the law, the law of Moses, for Jesus to eat those kind of things. Now, I'm not a Jew. I'm not. A, I'm a Gentile. I'm not an Israelite, and so I can eat bacon if I want to. I can eat shrimp. I can eat crawfish. But I'll tell you what. When I first moved to Louisiana, I ate a crawfish. Went to a crawfish boil. It had some crawfish, and man, was it spicy to my northerner mouth. But there's no crawfish that's too spicy. No crawfish as hot as hell. No crawfish as hot as hell. Next time you're at a crawfish boil, and you're sweating, and you're crying, and your nose is running, remember, hell's a lot hotter than that. Hell's a lot hotter than that. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Follow Jesus Christ. He died for you on the cross. He rose again from the grave, defeating death. And now he commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Are you ready to be judged by God? You're ready for the game. Are you ready for judgment day? My mom told me to tell you you're homosexual. <laughs> well, sodomites will go to hell. I'm not a sodomite. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm heterosexual. But if you're a sodomite young man, God can straighten you out. Thank you. You don't have to be a pervert anymore, have to be corrupted anymore. Jesus Christ can straighten you out. He can make you clean. He can make you new. He can make you straight. You'll be on the straight and narrow path. Not the broad path that leads to destruction. The broad and wide path that leads to destruction. Yes, God is against all sin, including homosexuality. He's against that sin. Always has been, always will be. Never once has God created a homosexual. Never once has anyone been born a homosexual. You've chosen to be that way. You know, recently I was preaching at a college campus and a homosexual had a very sincere question. He said, well, if, if I chose to be this way, then why would I choose this when I endure so much kind of suffering and difficulty because of it? Well, I asked the same question about choosing to become a Christian. I've endured difficulty and suffering for becoming a Christian. Does that mean I didn't choose it? Does that mean I was forced to be this way? Absolutely not. It just means I treasure Jesus above the suffering I endure for his name's sake. It's the same way with sodomites. They treasure their sodomy more than they treasure the difficulty they go through. They're willing to go through all kinds of difficulty, all kinds of suffering, just to be a sodomite. And let's face it, every sinner endures suffering and difficulty for their sin. Take cigarette smokers, for example. They're destroying their lungs. They're getting skin cancer. They're going to get uh, lung cancer. They might get throat cancer. They might get esophagus cancer. And they're still enduring smoking cigarettes, even in light of those sins. There's, a, there's actually a warning on the outside of the cigarette boxes, you might get cancer. 
on every box of cigarettes purchased. They, they still purchase it. Should we assume that they were born cigarette smokers? Absolutely not. They love the Lord, ladies. Every sin you commit is by choice, is by free will. No one makes you do it. You choose to do it. And that's why God's going to hold you accountable for all your sins. The anger you show in your heart today when your team does something wrong, or the referee makes a bad call, the anger you show in your heart today reveal the state of your heart. When curse words come out of your mouth, they reveal the state of your heart, the state of your mouth. And the Bible makes it clear. You'll give an account for every idle word. Not just words you're thinking about and thinking through and meditating upon before you speak, but every idle word. What are you mad about? The gospel. You're you're mad because I'm preaching the Bible? You should be happy. You are you uh, you should You're a sinner, sir. No I'm not. I follow Jesus. I love Jesus. He's a sinner. You're a sinner. Jesus is a sinner. You don't even know what that word means, do you? How many beers have you had today, sir? One too many, it looks like to me. Yeah, so I had a love for you today. It's a lot clearer. A lot clearer sounding. I had a love for you today. We come here in the name of Jesus to declare the name of Jesus. Declare salvation to you. The Bible says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. That times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. You know, I just want to say this to be real clear about this. 20 years ago, I think most prostitutes would be ashamed for the way some women are dressed today. That's just the facts of the matter. Just 20 years ago, most prostitutes would be ashamed at the way some of you women are dressing. Ashamed. Skirt so short, clothes so tight. It's absurd. It's absurd. No, go Jesus. No, not, not go to tigers either. Go Jesus. Who cares about the dogs? Who cares about the tigers? Go Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, did he have to get out of his car to do that? I guess. People but, didn't uh, listen. Yeah. Well, my point is, people yeah. didn't see him coming yeah. and yeah. want to stop. Yeah, they don't but care. He had to get out. They don't care. That. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Why did a cop have to get out of his car to make you stop? I mean, the lights were flashing. There's a police car right in front of you. That should be enough. Just like us, we're here to warn you today of the coming judgment. We're here to warn you that God's going to send out his angels, the police of the kingdom of God. He'll send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So we're here to warn you of judgment coming, of God's police law enforcers taking the criminals in his universe to his jail cell called hell. Yet you don't care. You keep on walking. You're apathetic. You close your ears. You plug your ears. You curse God's name. You say, go tigers and go dogs. But you won't say, go Jesus. I'll say, go dogs. Go dogs. Yeah, see? Real, real quiet on the go Jesus. But go dogs is real loud. That tells you where you're at, doesn't it? That tells you where you're at, doesn't it? That you're ashamed of Jesus. But Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of you, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now, if Jesus did the same thing like that, similar to that, and he said, if you are ashamed of the tigers or the bulldogs, most of you would be in the kingdom of God, but I would not. So I'm ashamed of the bulldogs, I'm ashamed of the tiger. I'm not ashamed of Jesus, though. But if you're ashamed of Jesus, you care more about the bulldogs or the tigers than Jesus. There's something wrong, friends. You put your arms up for that? You cheer for that? That you, you love football more than Jesus? Which one of these football players died for you? Which one of these colleges or these football teams died for you and offers you eternal life? Which one? Zero. Zilch. Nothing. So set your affections where they belong. Set your priorities where they belong upon Jesus. 
who died for you, upon Jesus who loved you at the cross, upon Jesus who offers you eternal life through what he did for you. That's where your affection, that's where your attention should be, not upon men wearing tights trying to get an inflated pigskin across the white line. That's not where your affection and attention should be. No, no jokes here. Just sobriety. No drunkenness here. Just sobriety. Seriousness. You're going to end up in hell if you don't repent of your sports idolatry. The Bible makes it clear. For this we know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. You see, you're being partakers with the, the kingdom of this darkness. You're being partakers of this world, loving this world. But Jesus says, do not love the world. The scripture says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Now coming up really soon, we have a very relevant day coming up. As soon as Halloween's done with this day, comes out in the stores like crazy. I call it National Covetousness Day. National Covetousness Day, December 25th. The day that's supposedly all about Jesus, even though he wasn't born that day. The day that was supposedly about Jesus' birth. Tell me how much focus is upon Jesus in your house on December 25th. Tell me what having a tree in your house has to do with Jesus. Tell me what putting lights on your tree has to do with Jesus Christ. Tell me what giving gifts to them, being covetous, has to do with Jesus Christ. And tell me what lying to your children about a mythical figure named Santa Claus has to do with Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says liars will go to hell. Every liar will end up in hell. So if you're lying to your children about Santa Claus... I'm not lying about the Tigers beating George. Well, you might be lying. You don't know what's going to happen yet. You might be lying. They might lose today. You're going to come out here and repent when they lose today, Mr. Tiger fan? But if you're lying to your children about Santa Claus, what else are you lying to them about? Everything. Well, liars will, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Liars will take part in the lake of fire. But the scripture says, everyone who loves and practices the law. Hey, children, have an announcement, children. Santa Claus is fake. does not exist. He does not have God-like attributes like... Go Tigers. No, BYOB. Bring your own bullhorn. Not go Tigers. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. No, not go Jesus too. Go Jesus only. Go Jesus only. Not go Jesus and go Tigers. Not go Tigers. And go Jesus. Not go Jesus. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. Forget about the Bulldogs. Forget about the Tigers. Forget about Gurley. Isn't he in the NFL now? Forget about these people. Follow Jesus Christ. He deserves this kind of attention. He deserves this kind of energy. This kind of mission work. You're all being missionaries for UGA and LSU. You wear their jerseys. You wear their uniforms. You wear their hats. You're being missionaries for LSU and UGA. Why not instead get a Jesus hat? Why not instead get a Jesus banner? Why not instead get a Jesus jacket? Or a Jesus jersey? You won't because you're ashamed of him. You don't love him. Stop scaring people away. Oh yeah, I'm scaring them away. I'm scaring everybody away. Everybody's afraid, right? I'm scaring everybody away from Jesus today while you go to LSU game with a beer in your hand. You're, you're going to LSU game with a beer in your hand. You're attracting lots of people to Jesus, aren't you? All you LSU fans getting drunk and UGA fans getting drunk, you're attracting lots of people to Jesus. That Jesus said, go into all the world and say, go Bulldogs and drink beer. Right? Oh, okay. So you guys are trying to tell me how to evangelize while you evangelize for LSU and UGA. Well, UGA does not offer salvation. LSU does not offer salvation. 
Jesus offers salvation. The tigers and the bulldogs are not the name above every name. Jesus is the name above every name. They must every knee shall bow. You'll bow to the tigers today. You'll bow to the bulldogs today. But will you bow to Jesus today? I have, sir. Not with the beer in your hand, you happen, sir. Yes, I have. Get rid of that beer. The tigers. Get rid of that beer. Follow Jesus. That's got everything to do with it. Drunkards won't inherit God's kingdom, sir. It's got everything to do with it. Sin has everything to do with it. Your fornication, your sex outside of marriage, your lust, your porn watching, your lying, your stealing, your covetousness, your idolatry. It has everything to do with Jesus. He's going to judge those people. And he's calling you to repent. He's calling you to go and sin no more. And you got no reason to continue in your sin. You end up in hell if you don't stop it. You can end up in hell if you don't stop it. Stop what? Stop your sin. Stop your sinning. Stop it all. Get rid of it all. It's like a large millstone tied around your ankles and it weigh you down to the lake of fire if you don't repent. Better the mercy of God and the love of God. God sent us here today for your sake, for your for the salvation of your souls. That you might be saved. I wonder how many fights there will be today between Tigers and Bulldog fans. I wonder how many fights there will be. Because we all have the love of God in their hearts going to this game, right? We all love our neighbors ourselves, right? Oh, except for when they're Bulldogs or Tigers on the opposite side of the field. Then we don't love them. You say, so we'll see how much love you have in your heart today towards your Bulldog or Tiger fans. When you're intoxicated and you're angry that your team loses later on today. Fuck LSU! See? We're good. Out of the mouth comes over full of the heart. We're good. Make her prove my point, Sinner. But God can clean up your heart and clean up your mouth just like He did for me. 22 and a half years ago, I had a filthy mouth, I had a filthy heart, and God cleansed me up by the blood of Jesus Christ. I became cleansed of my sins, delivered from my sins, freed from my sins. And He wants to do the same thing for you. The Bible makes it clear in John chapter 8. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes, you can be set free from your sin. But whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave will not abide in the house forever. But a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus Christ will set you free not only from drunkenness and a filthy mouth, not only from homosexuality and sexual morality, he'll set you free from sports fanaticism. Woo! You cheer for that, sir? Yeah, okay, sir. Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He said, you must be born again. You must be born again. Are you born again of the Holy Spirit? How do you know you're born again? How do you know you're right with God? How do you know you're, you have eternal life? The scriptures make it clear. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. This is the message we heard from Jesus and declaring to you, John said, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Go, Tiger! No, go, Jesus. Go, Jesus. No, absolutely not both. Go, Jesus. You cannot serve two masters. Either love the one and hate the other, or else be loyal to the one and despise her. You cannot serve God and the tigers. You can't serve God and the bulldogs. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Go, tigers. No, go, Jesus. Go, Jesus. No, not both. Now with that beer in your hand, not both. You're a hypocrite. You're going to walk by with a beer in your hand or dress in modestly with skin tight clothing on talking about Jesus Christ. You're a hypocrite. Oh, you, you, your feelings were hurt, weren't they? That's why you gave me the middle finger. Because you knew you were under conviction, right? You know you shouldn't be dressing like that, right? Excuse me, sir. Do you know what section 103 is? I wouldn't know a thing about the inside of that building, sir. I've never been in there and don't care to ever be in there. And in fact, you should throw away your ticket and go home. Repent. Football is uh, sin? Didn't say that. But you came all the way here from Louisiana, right? I did. Is that a sin? Will you do this for Jesus? I'm sorry? Will you do that for Jesus? If I were called upon to do such, yes. Have you ever been on a mission trip? I'm not a Mormon. I don't do mission trips. You have to be a Mormon to go on a mission trip? <laughs> you might have to be. Absolutely not. Okay. I went to Israel just this year. 
Well, that's fucking awesome, dude. Oh, no, I'm you not imagine. pounding you. You have a filthy okay. mouth. Repent. Okay. Repent while you still have time. Repent of all your sin. Your drunkenness, your sports idolatry, your fanaticism. Repent of it all, sir. No, no, no. no, no. Woo, woo. It's, no, no. Repent. Repent while you still can. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. He's near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Thank you. Thank you. He's near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. <laughs> you know, you really need to get serious about your soul, about, about your sin, about where your sin is going to lead you. You're wrong. I'm not wrong, I'm right. Prove to me I'm wrong. God loves us and the tigers. No, no. God wants you to repent. No, sinner. BYOB. Bring your own bullhorn. Leave your beer at home, bring your own bullhorn, get right with God, preach for Jesus instead. I have my own Bible. That's what I'm saying. BYOB. I have my own Bible. Oh, that's good. That's a good one. BYOB. Now, just follow the Bible now, young man. Open your Bible and read it and follow it. That, that was some good quick wit, but read your Bible and follow it. Follow Jesus. It's not, it does you no good to bring your own Bible and then leave it closed and let it collect dust and not read it, or if you read it, not obey it. Does you no good? No good. BYOB, bring your own Bible, but open it up, read it daily, study it, believe it, and most importantly, obey what you know. That's the most important part. Obey what you know. Go Jesus. Forget about tigers and bulldogs. Go Jesus. Yes, go Jesus. No, not with a beer in your hand. Get rid of your beer first, and it can say go Jesus with true with, with trueness, with genuineness, sincerity. The Bible says, let love be without hypocrisy. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. For the Bible teaches. So while you have a beer in your hand, you can't say go Jesus. Okay? Put down the beer. No, not go dogs, go Jesus. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. No, don't, don't drink beer either. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. So Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And what does God require of you to come to the Father through Jesus? He requires godly sorrow, which produces repentance, which leads to salvation, which is not regretted. Do you hear that? There's lots of things in life I've regretted. Every sin I've ever done, I've regretted very deeply that I committed that sin. But I've never, ever regretted repented of sin. I've never, ever regretted following Jesus Christ. I never regretted escaping the flames of hell and being made right with God. I've never regretted having my sins forgiven. So what does God require of you? God says he desires godly sorrow, which produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. But the sorrow of the world leads to death. The sorrow of the world leads to death. And many of you have worldly sorrow. You'll, you'll go, sure. You'll go, you'll go to church on Sunday tomorrow and you'll, you'll tell God sorry. You'll go to mass. You'll tell the priest sorry. But you're not really sorry. How do I know? Because you're not stopping. That's how I know. How do I know you're not really sorry about your sin? Because you don't stop your sin. You don't really forsake your sin. You just say sorry. You just pay lip service to God. But Jesus said in Matthew 15, these people draw near with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. If you go to church tomorrow and you praise Jesus and say hallelujah, but you're living in sin, and you have sports idolatry, and you idolize men in your heart, you are not right with God. You need to repent. You need to follow Jesus Christ in holiness. He desires purity in the inner parts. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No drunker can touch my mic. Kurt Busch! No drunker can touch my mic. BYOB, bring your own bullhorn, bring your own Bible. Get rid of the beer, pick up. Get rid of the bottle of beer, pick up the Bible, read it and heat it. Read it and heat it. That's what God desires for you. People all across the world 
Every year, this time of year, they make a covenant with covetousness. They already have set in their heart and in their mind that we're going to spend all this money. We're going to buy all these gifts. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to get all of our Bulldogs tickets. Yeah. And our Bulldogs go to the Bulldogs game. We're going to go into the forest. And we're going to cut down a tree. And we're going to drag it into the house. And we're going to fasten it so it doesn't move. And then we're going to deck it with silver and gold. Oh, wait a minute. That's what it says in Jeremiah chapter 10. We're going to cut a tree out of the forest. We're going to bring it in the house. We're going to nail it down so it doesn't move. And then we're going to deck it with silver and gold. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Right? Silver and gold decorations on every Christmas tree. What does a Christmas tree have to do with Christmas? Can somebody tell me? What does a Christmas tree have to do with Jesus Christ? What does putting lights all around this tree and laying gifts at its feet, what does that have to do with Jesus? I can't tell you what it has to do with. It has to do with idolatry. Oh, wait a minute. Idolatry. Idolatry. Wow, interesting. Idolatry. That's right. That's what it has to do with. It has nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing whatsoever. But we have Christians. I, I, I would I would suspect I would suspect 75% of the people here claim to be some sort of Christian. Whether it's a Catholic, which Catholics aren't Christians. Whether it's a Catholic, whether it's a Baptist, whether you're a non-denom, whatever. 75% of the people here probably claim to be some variation of what they consider a Christian. But what determines if you're a Christian? It's obedience unto the Lord. It's repentance and faith. That's what determines if you're a Christian. Jesus says, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. If you love him, you would follow him. You would do as he says. You would obey, right? When, when, when a child disobeys their parents, that's showing them that they don't really love them like they should. And then the ch as the parent... We correct the child just as God corrects us if you are his child. If you're not his child, however, there will be no correction. He'll let you just continue off dead in your sin. He'll let you continue off disobeying him. And you may not see any correction for this time period. But best believe there is correction that will be coming. The Word of God says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That means there is going to be correction. There is going to be payment for the sin that we commit. And idolatry is the biggest sin that we all have committed in our life, one way or the other. Because when you don't worship God, when you don't serve God, you're worshiping something else. Whether it's self, whether it's a false god, whether it's reli another religion, whether it's Satan, whatever it might be. When you don't worship and you don't follow the Lord, you're following yourself. You are worshiping yourself. I don't vote. There's no reason to vote. I'm not here to talk po uh, politics. I'm here to talk Jesus. That you need Jesus. Trump is not the savior of this nation. He's not the savior of the world. Jesus is. Only Jesus has salvation for your soul. Donald Trump doesn't. Hillary Clinton doesn't. Uh, Booty gag doesn't. Obama doesn't. None of those people have it. Joe Biden especially doesn't. That that pedophile. None of those people have salvation for your soul. Only Jesus Christ. So back to the Christmas. Back to the Christmas trees. So every year, people already have it made up in their mind, in their heart. Usually, it starts around uh, right around November first, maybe up until Thanksgiving. People will start going out to all the little places and cutting down their tree, picking it out, bringing it in their house, nailing it down, fastening it down, decorating it with silver and gold, putting lights on it, getting it right. And, then they, and then, then they even put little gold and silver plates on it with different things engraved on it. Maybe it's a Merry Christmas 2019, you know, the... The Johnson family or whatever it might say on there. You know, a lot of people, they have their traditions where they get their little family Christmas uh, plate that they put on the uh, tree every year. 
all traditions, all covenants that you're making in your heart and in your mind each and every year to commit idolatry and to commit covetousness, which the Word of God says that covetousness is idolatry. So when you covet, when you covet something that is not of the Lord, that you are in idolatry. You could be coveting. You could be coveting uh, this game today. You know, getting your merchandise, getting your gear ready, getting all dialed up, putting your short skirts on. You know, you're you're coveting. You're coveting this time you're going to spend today at this football game. Bread and circuses. I'm sure you do, sir, and you need to repent. I already have. Hey, bring your own mic. No drunks in the mic, sir. You reek of alcohol, sir. You need to repent. You know, many, many, they covet, they covet new cars, fancy cars, bigger houses, right? The newest video game system, right? Love it. Maybe some, maybe some covet a bigger butt, bigger breasts, right? Bigger lips. You know, darker skin complexion, right? Longer hair, different color hair. All lust, all covetousness, things that we don't have, things that we want but that we don't need, but we desire it because it's an inordinate affection. It's not from God. And this, this is what idolatry is, friends. Whether it's sports idolatry, whether it's the idolatry of your career, of your job, all this kind of idolatry separates you from God. Whether it's celebrating, like a good whether it's celebrating, whether it's celebrating these these satanic holidays that have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, and many might say, well, we talk about Jesus come December 25th. We celebrate Jesus come December 25th. Let me ask you this: Why do you celebrate his birthday December 25th? My arm, my arm, my birthday's in July. If you were celebrating my birthday. In January, I'd be like, why are you celebrating my birthday in January? I was born in July. That's right. And it makes absolutely no sense. So why would we celebrate the birth of Christ when he wasn't even born in December? Makes absolutely no sense, friends. But every year, this is what we do. We make a covenant in our heart that this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to this house, that house. We're going to get worked up. We're going to be all stressed out. And why? For what? What, 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 what it's accomplished after all of it? You know how many people would probably be more happy, or I should say even more joyful, if they didn't celebrate that day? If they didn't get themselves and their family all worked up for that time of the year? They say it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's actually the most depressing time of the year. Depression is through the roof during the holiday season. Well, you might be depressed if the, if the Georgia loses today, the Bulldogs lose today. And you might be depressed if the Tigers lose. Both can't win, one's going to lose, but guess what? In the end, they're both going to lose. In the end, they're both going to lose. Because there's not going to be any Georgia Bulldogs games. There's not going to be any LSU Tigers games. There's not going to be any Alabama Crimson Tide games in heaven. Best believe that. There's not going to be men in yoga pants running around in heaven chasing a little ball around. That's right. They're not going to be doing that. They're not, there's not going to be any butt slaps. Line. There's not going to be any that of that line. going on in heaven. Georgia or LSU? Jesus. Georgia! False dichotomy. Jesus. Jesus. I love Jesus. 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 Jesus! Jesus! That's right. Jesus. See how loud they lift their voice up for the Bulldogs and for the LSU Tigers? We're going to hear it. We'll, we'll hear it. They'll be there. Oh, you'll hear all the screams, all the cheers. You'll never hear them scream that loud for the Lord, though. But imagine the day. Imagine the day when the Lord returns, when Jesus Christ returns, when he cracks the sky open and he returns to gather his elect and to slaughter his enemies. Imagine what's going to happen that day. All that cheering, all that drunkenness, all that chambering, all that rioting, all that reveling, it's all going to stop. All the music, all the music is going to stop. There ain't going to be no cheers and screams then. 
There's the only thing that's going to be is people are going to wish they would listen to the preachers on the corner. They're going to wish they repented that day. And friends, look at the climate of the world. Look at the signs that we see. Look at the signs everywhere taking place before you. Can't you see that Jesus Christ is drawing near and near and right. near? That he's coming back Amen. sooner than later? It's Amen. sooner than later, friends. Can't you see it? You may say, well, <laughs> that's what they've been saying for the last 20 years. That's what they've been saying for the last 30 years that hey, Jesus is returning. Well, guess what? Noah preached for 120 years. Noah preached for 120 years that the rain's coming, the flood's coming. 120 years, and guess what happened? Eventually, the doors of the ark closed. And when the doors of the ark closed, no one was able to get on anymore. Friends, don't miss the ark. Don't miss the ark. That ark is Jesus Christ. Do not miss the ark, friends, because your time is running out. All this chambering, all this drunkenness. Jesus said it was going to be this way when he returns. He said when he returns, they're going to be partying it up. They're going to be getting married. They're going to be gluttonous. They're going to be getting filled with alcohol, filled with food, filled with the partying, filled with the fun. I mean, it's clear and obvious, friends. I mean, seriously, really take a hard look at it. You know, you didn't have, you, 100 years ago, we didn't have all this overness, over uh, abundance of sports. We're going we didn't have way. all this overabundance of drunkenness or rioting. There wasn't so much hyper focus on it like it is today. That's how you can tell we're living in the last days. That's how you can tell we're getting closer and closer to the end. Thank God. Well, I, 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 I pray I pray you repent of being a follower of the dogs, friend. I appreciate that, but I, I, friend, please, please, turn from the bulldogs. I know how they worship the dog in Athens, Georgia. They got statues of the dog everywhere in Athens. They literally worship a dog. They're a bunch of dog worshipers. They are. No, I will not be doing that. I have a wife. What's wrong with that? Watch your mouth. You have children everywhere, and you're cussing like that with children everywhere? Come on, man. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself cussing like that in front of little children. Come on. What's wrong with you? Can't even control yourself. And see, and, and, and that's the thing, that's the thing, friends. They worship the dog in Athens. They got statues to this dog. They worship the tiger in, in, in down in Louisiana. It's like over here, it's this big uh, uh, monstrosity here, this big bear building. They worship the falcon. They worship the phoenix. They worship that bird. They worship Dominique Wilkins. Got his, got his statue in front of State Farm Arena. Just like at the United Center, they got the statue of Michael Jordan because they worship Michael Jordan. They're deifying, they're deifying men. They're deifying animals. Anything but God they want to worship. And guess what, friends? The Word of God says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. That's right. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only, no, you can't say that. You need to bring your mic. And thou, uh, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shalt thou serve. Him only shalt thou serve. Not the bulldogs. No. Not the tigers. No. Not Matt Ryan and the Falcons. No. Now, I don't even know who plays for the Hawks. They're such a garbage team. <laughs> Not the Hawks. <laughs> I think maybe Vince Carter might still play for them. I don't know. <laughs> no. Not the Hawks. Not the Atlanta Dream. Not the Atlanta United. Not the Braves with the two homosexual players they got on their team. Yeah. They got two, they got two guys on their team that are literally are sitting there hugging, hugging each other and stroking the, each other's heads in the, in the dugout. That's crazy. On television. That's disgusting. What's that guy's name? Akunza? Or, no uh, idea. Whatever his name is, Akunza Jr. or something like that. Seriously, this is what's going on. And people cheer it on like, Woo! Yeah, look at those guys in the dugout. Yeah, that's a bromance right there. Guarantee you I would never do that to my brother here, my brother there, this brother over here. <laughs> I would never do that. I would never pat and stretch their head like that. Oh, man. <laughs> But this is what's going on. That's this is gross. the foolishness of the bread and circus show that we have today. This is the foolishness of it all. Now you got now you got homosexual cheerleaders 
on different football teams. What is it, the New Orleans Saints? The Seattle, uh, C I mean, the Los Angeles Rams. They got homosexual cheerleaders now. And this is what people are going to see. This is what they're paying to see. And so they're paying to be entertained. But Jesus said it was going to be this way in the last days, friends. You're going to be partying it up. You're going to be living it up. I can't shake your hand, friend. Well, Jesus, the Word of God tells us not to. The Word of God tells us not to come in agreement with, with those that have another doctrine. If you're a lost sinner, you have another doctrine. You don't have the doctrine of Christ. That's true. Your, your doctrine is the doctrine of the world. Your doctrine is get drunk, party it up, live now, right? Because you're going to die later. And that is true. You are going to die later. But friends, you're not guaranteed. You're not guaranteed to make it past today. None of us are. I heard one guy say, hey, I'm, I'm in my early 20s. I still got plenty of time. You don't know that. That's right. You could die of a heart attack tonight. Right. You could get in a car accident today. If you took the train, who knows? God forbid, that train could derail. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are. But we put salvation off like we are guaranteed. Well, I'll get right with God next week. I had a guy one time tell me, he's like, hey, I'm getting ready to repent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an appointment with God to repent, you know, in a few weeks. That's not how repentance works. You don't make an appointment with God. You don't say, I'm getting ready to repent. No, you just repent. You do it. If you know you need to repent, you have to repent. Because that's the Lord telling your, that's the Lord convicting your conscience. Now, how many people out here have a convicted conscience tonight? How many people know they need to get right with the Lord? How many people here know they're living, they're living a life full of sin and they know it's not right? You shouldn't cheer on sin, friend. Sin is what separates you from God. Your idolatry is what separates you from God. Your covetousness is what separates you from God. I mean, how many people, how many people, just, what was it, a week and a half ago, or, yeah, about a week and a half ago, or two weeks ago, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was a couple weeks ago. And how many people went and said, oh, we're so thankful, while you stuffed your faces full of food, got all thankful, right? And then you went out shopping. I you went out maxing out the credit card Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Cyber Monday. Tuesday too. Tuesday too, you're right. Because now they're doing it now they're doing it for like a whole week now. I mean I, I guess the one good thing is at least the fights have calmed down some. At least now people aren't trampling over each other as much now. Unless a new pair of Jordans comes out. Well then they trample each other. And they might kill somebody for a pair of Jordans. And that's the insanity, that's the insanity of what covetousness does. That's the insanity of the real spirit, the whole real so-called Christmas spirit. It has, if you don't repent, the word of God says drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, you want me to lie to you? The word of God says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Word of God says that, that adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Word of God says that the effeminate will not inherit the kingdom of God. That thieves will not inherit the kingdom of God. That idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. Not just drunkards, not just homosexuals, but many, and anybody who lives dead in their sin, you are sin, yes, will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why we must repent and be born again. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus when he came to him, he said, ye must be born again. That doesn't mean you enter into your mother's womb and come back out your mother's womb. But spiritually speaking, you get washed. You get washed by the blood of the Lamb. And you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Fanatics. On and the side of that you, bag. you have Fanatics. a zeal and a desire to serve God. Fanatics. You have a zeal and a desire to obey God. You want to obey God. Obeying God is not grievous to you. It's not grievous to you at all. You actually have a zeal to want to obey Him. You look forward to obeying Him. You look forward to serving Him. That's what happens when you're born again. Friends, it's, it's not an it's if, it's, not, it's a when. When you're born again, you want to please the Lord. Yes, we don't want tight pants, that's right. That's right. I don't know, are they? Are they? If they if they if they form if they if they form your figure, yeah, they're they're form fitting. Yes, they're tight pants. I'm not looking at your butt, friend. I know you want me to. That's gay. That's very gay, friend. 
I don't I don't swing that way. What's that? Gay shit kind of sexy. Gay is kind of sexy. Gay is kind of sexy. Oh, uh, that's disgusting. If you're afraid of your masculinity, that's kind of gay as shit. Not gonna that's kind of disgusting. I, I don't be looking at guys' butts. I don't be like, yeah, man, you pretty, you pretty sexy, bro. Nah, we don't do that over here. Hey, we don't do that over here. The word of God says that the that the homosexuals, that the effeminate, that abusers of themselves with mankind, that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, that's why the word of God says in such words, some of you, you can get cleansed from it. You can be delivered from it. You can be justified. You can be sanctified unto the Lord. But you can't keep your sin and have him. That's why Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Either we serve God or we serve sin. That's that's the ultimate that's the ultimate decision. Either you're serving God or you're serving sin. And that sin can come in various forms. Whether it's idolatry, whether it's pride, whether it's lust, whether it's drunkenness, whether it's fornication. Hey, don't be touching people's stuff. No, I didn't I, I'm not touching your beer can, I'm not touching your shoes or your shirt. Don't be touching our equipment. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. That's right, friends. So whatever that sin may be, when you put that sin above God, you are in idolatry, and you do serve that, and you don't serve God because you can't serve both, Jesus said. Jesus said you'll hate one and you'll love the other, but you cannot have both. But you can't love LSU. You're you can't. Amen. Not more than Jesus. You can't love LSU. Not more than Jesus. Go Tigers! Not more than Jesus. Not more than Jesus. Not more than Jesus. You can't love LSU more than Jesus. You can't love the Bulldogs more than Jesus. You can't even love your own children more than Jesus. You can't even love your own spouse more than Jesus. That's right. If you love anything above Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you are in idolatry. Yes, you can be in idolatry over your wife or over your husband. You can be in idolatry over your children. Where's Bethany? Over your children. That's right. Oh, that's what, okay. There, I see Friends, it. you can Friends, be yeah. in idolatry to the, the image in your mind you've created of who Jesus is. You can be in idolatry to that. You can be in idolatry to your fake religion, whether it's Islam, whether it's Hinduism, whatever it might be. You could be in idolatry to that. But if it comes before Jesus Christ, then you are in idolatry. Every last one of us, every last one of us have to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the Why faith or not. Head? We're very Christian. We're, we come from a great church. That's right, friends. So, so why would you Jesus shake your head? Jesus will serve Bible. the Word of God says. Oh, are you going to serve Jesus? Oh. Or are you going to serve okay, the tiger? We're just preaching the Bible is all we're doing. Because guess what? So silly. Guess what? No, not a tiger is the creation. Thank you. But God is the creator. Y'all having fun? Y'all having fun? A bulldog is the creation. But God is the creator. This world, this earth, these plants, these buildings, this is all no, creation. Us humans, we're all creation, but God is the creator. So we're not to serve and worship creation. the way she's dressed. No. We worship the creator, the creator, which is God, the Father, hallelujah. Jesus Christ. The Word of God says that all things were created by and through Him. That's right. For him. For Jesus. That's right. So he asked an interesting question. He asked, well, with, with Noah and Noah's children, and how, how did they reproduce? Wasn't that incest? It wasn't incest back then. No, why? Because it was a fresh gene pool. It was fresh. The gene pool wasn't corrupted like it is today. We've had, we've had thousands and thousands and thousands of years go by since the flood happened and over time yes over time things are going to degrade down things are going to break down so if, He's not if a family now. members if family members create children today yes if they're going to be they're going to be deformed there's going to have deformities through incest back then that wasn't the case back then that wasn't the case 
And see, we're living we're living in the last days, friends. We're living in the last days. Look at everything that's going on in this world, friends. It's going to end soon. It is going to end soon. Homosexuality is being approved everywhere. Abortion. Abortion is accepted everywhere. I think they're trying to make, aren't they trying to make cannabis legal uh, nationwide now? I think for recreational use, at least I heard something like that. Not sure. I mean, it's just getting worse and worse and worse, friends. Next thing you know, before you know it, before you know it, they're going to try to legalize pedophilia. They're already trying to get their rights. They're not going to do that. They already are doing it. They are already are doing it. Watch. They have drag queen story hour everywhere. Where? No, why would you say yeah? Why would you say hell yeah to that? Where is it? They had it right at the city hall in Atlanta here. Go down! That's disgusting. Why would you want to? Why would you want to watch a drag queen read stories to little children? The drag queen, wherever they have them at. They have them at libraries. They had it at city hall back in June. Even some churches now are allowing it. Yes, some churches are allowing it. Look it up. You, you you say you say oh that's not gonna happen. Why it's already happening? There's organizations called NAMBLA, North American Man Boy Love Association, wanting their rights. You laugh, it's true. This is true stuff. They'll be in gay pride parades. Look how trans transgenderism is accepted. I'm the weirdo. I'm the weirdo because I think that a man is to be a man and a woman is to be a woman. But I'm the weirdo. I'm the wacky one, right? Well, I guess I'll be the weirdo then. I yes, I think it is weird. Talk to me. Yes, I think it is weird for a man to put on women's clothing and lop his private parts off. I think that's very weird. God thinks it's weird too, because from the beginning he created them male and female. But see, my point is, this is how you know we're living in the last days, friends. This is how you know we're living there, because these things have become so accepted. Worldwide, these things are becoming accepted for the most part. But what's funny, what's funny is they, a, a lot of people will claim, oh, you Christians are bigots. You Christians hate homosexuals. Well, guess what? We don't murder homosexuals, but Islam does. That's right. Islam murders homosexuals. That's right. Christians don't do that though. No. Right. Christians don't murder murder homosexuals, but Islam does. Yeah, look what I'm talking about. Islam does murder homosexuals. They do. They say Islam says kill the infidel, right? If you don't if you don't pick up Islam, kill the infidel. That's Islam is a wicked religion. Muhammad was a pedophile. I am a homosexual. Well, you need to repent and be born again. I am a homosexual. You need to repent and be born again. Homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom, friend. I'm going in January. But that's right. That's right, friends. Muhammad was a pedophile himself. And this is the religion. This is the religion that is getting so accepted in America right now. Islam. You're, you're getting you're getting uh, uh, Muslims in, in in the politics, in office, and whatnot, right? Getting is completely accepting. Go Jesus! But yeah, again, the founder of this religion was a pedo. Go figure. Aisha, what was she like? Nine years old. Nine years old. And, and, and this is, and, and, and yet yeah, we're the bigots though. The Christians are the bigots. The Christians are the bigots, but we don't even murder. Well, we don't sit here and say, hey, those homos should be put to death. We don't say that. We don't say that. We don't do that. No, we want the homosexuals to be born again. We want them to be born again. We want them to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ because they can. The same with the idolaters. The same with fornicators, the same with adulterers. If they repent, even murderers, if they repent and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and they obey and they live according to his word, they too, they too will inherit the kingdom of God. But Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes under the Father but by me. It's one way, friends. It's a one-way street. Hey, it's a very narrow street. Beer, it's a very, very narrow street. But that one way is through Jesus and Jesus alone. It's through Jesus alone. Not through Muhammad. Not through Krishna. 
Not through any of these fake gods out here, friends. Call upon Jesus Christ today. Forsake your idols. Forsake your idols. Forsake worshiping this dog. Worshiping this tiger. And call on Jesus Christ today, friends. We love you enough to come out here and tell you the truth today. You need Jesus because right now, right now, I would say the vast majority of you are probably separated from him. The vast majority of you, Jesus would say, I don't even know you. He doesn't want to say that though. But unfortunately, the vast majority, he would probably say that to you, friends. Hey, Brother Corey. Hey, Brother Corey. God bless you. Snakes don't talk. Snakes don't talk? How do you know? I know snakes don't talk. God bless you. Just, 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 just. Go Jesus. Just wait over there. I can't let it hey man, so we're out here this evening to preach the gospel. I'll take this for a while. Watch the tracks. Okay. To preach the good news of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ that God sent his son, his one and only son, to die oh, yeah. for our sins so that we could overcome sin and have victory over our sins and not be bound to our sins and not believe the lie of the devil that we were born in sin and we can't help it. We were just born this way. That's a lie from hell. Yeah, Lady Gaga is a liar, and she needs to repent. And if you endorse her, you need to you need to repent as well, sir. So we are out here encouraging you guys to take up your cross and follow Jesus, like Jesus commanded all of His creation, all of creation, to repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Have you repented today? Have you put your trust in Jesus Christ today? Have you given him your whole life today? If not, I encourage you to. I encourage you to consider it. I encourage you to think about it before it's too late. And not wait until you get older and, and think that you'll have another day. Because as we all know, huh? every day isn't promised to us. Muslims. It's not promised that we will have another day. So don't take it for granted. Today could be your last day. And I encourage you, we encourage you today to give your life to Jesus Christ. We encourage you today, guys. Turn from your sins. Come out of your misery. Come out of your misery today, guys. Let go of your brokenness today and, and come broken before the Lord Jesus Christ. God said that he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Are you humbling yourselves today? Can you humble yourselves today, folks, and, and bow before the mercy seat of the Lord God? Can you humble yourself? Has God for forgiveness today? Or are you too proud and too high lifted up? Saving souls, not dogs, sir. We're here to save souls, not dogs. Humble yourselves before That's right. the mighty hand. We're here to save souls, sir. No, souls, people, humans, man in God's image. Let a dog right now, little puppy dog. What about him? Oh, you guys. You only have happiness in your No. You put up here when something's happening. No. But other than that, without this, uh, without this game. When did Jesus ever talk about dogs? When did Jesus ever talk about dogs? Yeah, That's right, he didn't talk about dogs. Have joy. We have unspeakable joy that the, the Bible world can't give the Bible. and the world can't take away. I read the Bible. Do you have that joy? Or are you What's only that? happy when something's happening? I've read the Bible. What Bible? You're only happy, one you're one only happy when there's an event happening. happening. No, it hasn't. Yeah, yeah. No, so you have drinks so in you your system. You that, that little trick you just try to do won't work on Dismond Day. So you got dogs. That you won't work on Dismond Day, sir. You're idolizing dogs. You got to read. You idolize dogs. The true joy comes from the Lord. You idolize dogs. That's your problem. Dogs. Yeah. Who said that? You care more about dogs than people. I said you got.
No, they need to be saved. You got sinners out here that need to be saved. Sinners. Including you. He wants to give including you. Including me. Yeah. Joy he wants to see it. Let the dog that this die. World can't give. No, drunkenness, I, lying, well, stealing, lust, fornication, porn watching, covetousness, stealing. All that's all that's sin. Idolatry, that's all sin. Sinners need to be saved. You need to be saved. No in the flesh. How about the dog? How about you? Put no what confidence about me? in the flesh. You need to be saved from no your sin. Everybody needs to be saved. That's right. I'm trying to Jesus do something. I'm trying to save the dog. I'm not going to help you in judgment day, sir. That's where true confidence why? comes from. You need Jesus, that's why. You want the whole point of being like Jesus if you ain't going to do anything good. When did Jesus ever do anything with dogs? But what do you... You know, dogs are considered unclean animals in the Bible? Uh, yeah. Dogs are outside the city in the Bible. Oh, I got you. Dog, dog the thing way, best friend. No, what? that's what you say. That's what you say. Be defeated. No, God says. What do you mean? No, God says. And continue okay. to be overcome with sin. Yeah. Best friend. The only thing is loyal but to you. But the end is not good. The only thing is not good for you. Absolutely not. My wife's loyal to me. My children are loyal to me. Because My friends are loyal to me. Death. Are you so? No, you don't. Yeah, I do. It's a way that seems I, right to a man. But what does your dog do when you're gone? Huh? What does your dog do when you're gone? That's what God's dog, word says. Do wait on me to come back? How do you know that? You're not there. Trust not in yourself. How do you know that? You're not there. What? How do you know that? How do I know that? What Trust not about? in your own. Yeah, what are you self, talking about? I said my wife's loyal to me. You said you don't know that. You don't know that. Dog, you drop him off, and it'll wait on me to the come Bible back. The Bible says, die waiting on me. How do you know that? Believe in Jesus Christ. I've had Be baptized. Him. You've had him wait for you yeah, until he dies. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. You love dogs more than you love people. Let me ask you something. You love dogs more than you love God. Jesus black or what? Don't matter. No, I'm you want to. Doesn't matter. Jesus black or what? Doesn't matter. Jesus black or what? Doesn't matter. You have to make black or what? Are you a sinner or a saint? Jesus black Are you a sinner or a saint? Have you read the Bible? Then tell us what color he is. Then tell us what color he is. black or white? The Bible doesn't tell us what color he is. I've answered your question several times, I didn't listen. Jesus black or white? The Bible doesn't tell us what color he is. People, my friends, choose life. Is Jesus black or white? These little tricks you're trying to do won't help in Judgment Day, sir. Jesus black or white? Don't choose death. Don't choose the road of destruction. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. It's called a false dichotomy, sir. It's called a false dichotomy. It's a false dichotomy. It's a false dichotomy. You got the first one. False dichotomy. Do you know what a false dichotomy is? Well, Jesus black or white. It doesn't matter if uh, Jesus was white or black. Yeah, it doesn't matter, sir. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's my whole point. So what difference does it make if you're a Muslim, whatever? You believe in a certain Because Muhammad said that God has... You just changed skin colors to religion, sir. That was a nice switch. Skin colors to religion is the same thing. Not the same category, sir. Jesus is the truth. What's your point? There's Caucasian. Jesus said it. You might be saved from your sins, sir. The Bible says that he's the image of the invisible God. That's why it matters, sir. That's why it matters. He didn't make any points. Oh, give your heart today to the Lord Jesus Christ, folks. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't play with your souls. Don't play with your souls, folks. Give your life to Jesus today. I urge you. I encourage you. I implore you. 600 years later. Repent of your sins today. Turn from your sins. That's right. Believe in Jesus Christ today, folks, and have eternal life. Get victory. Have victory over your sins, folks. Don't keep being bound by your sins. No children. And being defeated. Give your life to Jesus.